The events at Fukushima reinforced that any nuclear accident with public health and safety or environmental consequences of that magnitude is inherently unacceptable. While we focused on the radiological consequences of this event, I believe we can and cannot ignore the large social and economic consequences such an event poses to any country with a nuclear facility that deals with such a crisis. In Japan, more than 90,000 people remain displaced from their homes and land, with some having little prospect for a return to their previous lifestyle in the foreseeable future. While not easy to characterize, these are significant hardships on these people, and they are inherently unacceptable. So as we look to the future, and we look in a proactive way, we ultimately will have to address the issue of how we deal with, with nuclear events that lead to significant land contamination and displacement, perhaps permanently, of people from their homes and their livelihoods and their communities. What you just heard was the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's chairman, Gregory Yasko, saying that the NRC doesn't take into account mass evacuations and people not getting back on their land for centuries when it does a cost-benefit analysis as to whether or not a nuclear plant should be licensed. I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds and today I'm at the Regulatory Information Conference put on by the NRC in Washington DC. So today I'm in Washington DC. A couple weeks ago though I was in Tokyo and when I was in Tokyo, I took some samples. Now, I didn't look for the highest radiation spot. I just went around with five plastic bags. And when I found an area, I just scooped up some dirt and put it in the bag. One of those samples was from a crack in the sidewalk. Another one of those samples was from a children's playground that had been previously decontaminated. Another sample had come from some moss on the side of the road. Another sample came from a, um, um, the, the roof of an office building that I was at. And the last sample was right across the street from the main judicial center in downtown Tokyo. Well, I brought those samples back, declared them through customs, and sent them to the lab. And the lab determined that all of them would be qualified as radioactive waste here in the United States and would have to be shipped to Texas to be disposed of. Now think about the ramifications for the nation's capital, whether it's Tokyo or the United States. How would you like it if you went to pick your flowers and were kneeling in radioactive waste? That's what's happening in Tokyo now. And I think that's the point that Chairman Yasko was trying to make. When the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does its cost-benefit analyses now, it doesn't take into account the cost to society if you have to evacuate for generations or if you have to move 100,000 people, perhaps forever. There's 100 miles between us and about a dozen nuclear power plants here in Washington, D.C. Fukushima was almost 200 miles away from Tokyo. And yet Tokyo soil, in some places, the ones I just happened to find, would qualify as radioactive waste here in the States. How would we feel if our nation's capital were contaminated to that degree? So I agree with Chairman Yasko. New nukes and old nukes that are being relicensed should include as a cost in their analysis what we've learned to be happening in Tokyo and in Japan. Thank you very much, and I'll keep you informed.